Hey everyone, Mtash here, and today I want to talk about Rangefinder, and while it is an amazing stat in many people's eyes, in others, it could be trash. In my eyes, I'm not a fan on certain weapons. Now, that's a pretty controversial thing to say, because Rangefinder is good. If you look at the Ostringer, everyone was hunting for a Rangefinder Ostringer, a max range Ostringer, because the thing is nuts. You can engage at 38 meters, 39 meters on this one, I believe. And that is pretty insane. You can push into pulse rifle territory. With rangefinder, it extends the range so much that even though this spare rations has the perfect roll pretty well, the max range, it has 15 range more than the one on the left. The one on the left can still outrange the one on the right by 1.5 meters. That's pretty interesting. And if you were to get the max roll on this spare rations, it would actually outrange it by four or five or even six meters in some scenarios. What? That's crazy. That's amazing. But the one thing that people don't really discuss is how important the zoom magnification is. Now, with the spare rations, with this rangefinder, it says aiming this weapon increases its effective range and zoom magnification. But how much does it increase that? How much does it change things? And why might you not want rangefinder? I'm going to discuss this in a minute, but I want to take a quick second to thank Remnant from the Ashes for sponsoring this video. Now, I've had my eye on Remnant for some time. It looked really cool because it mixes looters, shooters, and a little bit of Dark Souls-esque feeling in it. There's dodge rolling, there's shooting, there's abilities and mods for your gear, and a ton of upgrades that you can get for your character. Some things might boost crit chance, some things might boost your mods, there's a ton of different ways to play, and you can also choose your archetype of character, and if you want to be a melee guy, you can run in and just melee everything. If you want to uh, use mods and abilities, you can be a cultist, or you can snipe people from a distance. Now this game can get kind of spooky, okay? It can also get pretty damn hard but it's quite satisfying to win in these engagements, and when you figure out an enemy and how to beat them, I'm telling you guys, it is a lot of fun. There are some crazy, difficult bosses to fight, but again, satisfying to beat. They can also drop some pretty rare stuff that'll make you much stronger, and I highly recommend this game. If you guys are interested in getting it, link in the description to download it, check out Remnant from the Ashes, and we're jumping back into the content. So what we're going to do to test out this weapon and test out the zoom is we're going to aim at this ammo box. I'm going to aim right in the middle with my original spare rations, and then we're going to swap to the rangefinder one. If you look at this spare rations here, I'm aiming kind of right in the middle of that box. On the left side of the screen, I can see a little bit of that wall, right? There's that kind of red area there, but I can see a little bit of that wall. On the right side, we can see past the boxes, almost into that little doorway there, and you've got a pretty good chunk past the boxes. Now, if I was to swap weapons and do the exact same thing with this spare rations, let's aim at approximately the same spot, I can just see past the box on the right. Fractionally, only a couple little millimeters. And on the left, I actually can't see that wall anymore. And I have to go like this and zoom over here, over here, over here, over here, to see the same amount. Now, that might not seem like a big deal, but now look at the box on the right side. I'm in the middle of that box, when before I could see the whole box and past the box, as well as this much of the screen. Now, in most cases, if you're aiming down sights at someone over here, you're not really going to care you're not really going to notice, and having the extra range to hit max damage on someone on the stairs here is probably a benefit. It's why that Ostringer is so good, because the Ostringer can allow you to push people and fight people at very large ranges and actually win those duels even if they have a better gun. A 150 hand cannon is typically better than a 140 because the 150 kills faster. But with the Ostringer, I can engage at a massive range and make you do less damage and make it impossible to 3-tap me. The Ostringer shines because of this range. And 
I mean, spare rations can shine because of this range. I can do a similar thing, or at least I can be confident that I'm getting full damage at more ranges. There is no major negative to having range finder because it works in most scenarios and it benefits you in many of them. But there's one that it really hurts you, and that's up close and personal. Now, if you go back here and you, you zoom in like this, you might not notice an inch or two on the left or an inch or two on the right. I would argue that if you're engaging with someone and you're cutting off your field of view, your visuals, you might get caught off guard because right over there, there might be a guy sniping. Or right in that doorway, there might be a guy sniping. And I can't see him. I have no idea that he's sniping me. And this could lead to me dying. If I'm using my other spare rations and I'm engaging on someone in the heavy, I might notice that guy. I might see him there and I might go, Yeet! get behind cover. With the rangefinder and with that smaller point of view, I'm putting myself in a couple more risky situations because I just can't see targets. But the worst thing, the absolute worst thing, is the magnification on my zoom close range. Uh, actually, let's go back to the original one. I'm going to stand right here, and I'm going to aim at this as if it was a player very close range. I can still see past him on left and right, and this guy is pretty close. It's a little handcuffing to use a, a hand cannon at this range, but there's going to be scenarios where you have to do it. Well, what happens when you use the rangefinder one? Okay, let's, let's use the rangefinder one. Let's do the same thing. Let's aim in. Oh, you might not be able to notice that, but I sure can. It feels so zoomed in, it's like he's right on top of me. And it's a little bit harder to react when someone is this close to you. Even at this range over here, on this pillar, when you zoom in, it really snaps you in. And it's actually kind of disorienting. Let's say you turn on a target and you zoom in. It feels, oh, it feels like I put a little monocle or a set of glasses on my eyes. And that little adjustment there, that, that zoom factor, in some cases might catch you off guard or might make you miss a shot because it's over-exaggerating. Because when you zoom in, it, it, it like, it almost like drags you past where you want it to aim. It, the way it, the way it zooms in, it like, it like shoots you into it. It, it like directs you towards it. And it's very jarring for someone like myself. Other people probably don't notice it. And at longer ranges, you probably won't care. It might actually help you. But if you like to run around and get in these crazy aggressive engagements, and maybe you're fighting in a closer range, rangefinder might not be the choice for you. In a lot of cases, if you're going to be fighting at a massive range, if you're really trying to get an advantage, you would use something like the Ostringer. You would push out your range as far as possible so that you can limit the ability of people to three tap you with other guns but if you're going to be extending yourself out with something like ostringer or the duke there are some situations where you might as well just use a pulse rifle because the pulse rifle can push it out even further and i know we're talking about hand cannons here but i just find it interesting because yes rangefinder is great but now that i have it and the more that i've been using it on my spare rations the less I'm liking it. I can get away with it with Ostringer because there are a lot of situations where I win because of the range, but with the spare rations, there are not very many situations where I'm winning because of this range. If I had the perfect roll, if I had the absolute perfect roll and range finder, I would make an argument that you'd be in the same situation as the Ostringer. With the absolute god rolled spare rations and range finder, you can push people out of their comfort zone. You can win engagements with a rangefinder spare ration that other people, they can't do full damage and you can. But up close and personal, you do have to sacrifice that feel of, of not control. I, yeah, maybe control. Up close and personal, it feels, feels long range. And, and that's kind of what happened with sniper rifles in Destiny. There's a lot of long-range scopes. If you compare it to short gaze way back in the day in Destiny 1, then they nerfed it, 
and now there's a lot of other long range scopes, the zoom factor handcuffs you close range in some situations and it makes it harder to aim. The, the zoom is a bit disorienting. You lose some of those peripheral visions. And so that's something you have to give up. But even on something like a, a fusion rifle, this air tilt, if I was using this long range scope and then range finder, it's just going to extend that. And so if you're trying to use a fusion up close and personal, you are really zoomed in here. It's like you're using a damn sniper rifle and tracking someone close range, you might lose them. Not only are you using a long range scope, but that is getting further magnified by the range finder. So you have to, you have to be using this at a, at a kind of a medium to long range or else you're really handcuffing yourself. You're really gonna be disoriented and it's gonna be really hard to track people, especially if it's something like a jumping hunter. If a hump, uh, a humper, <laughs> if a little humper, if a little hunter jumps, and you're trying to adjust with this long range scope, it, it, it's going to feel pretty tough. You could hit fire and be a little bit more comfortable and then kind of zoom in, but I don't know guys. Range finder is a give and take. It's more of a give and take than I thought. I was actually hunting for a, a, a range finder spare rations. And now that I've tried it, I don't know if I love it. Because up close, I feel kind of uncomfortable. And I'll get used to it, but just be careful, because rangefinder, it's not, it's not perfect. There, there is some major negatives to it, especially if you are hyper aggressive and you are pushing in. If you're shotgunning, even fusion rifling, you might, you might not love it. You might not love it. If you're sniping, you want to pick people off at a distance, might be a better choice. That's it for me though, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.